Good morning everyone, I'm Chris and welcome back to this week's episode of Rift Amps. Okay, a uh, bit of a mess at the moment, but I finally managed to get onto the Silver Plate Pro Reverb that was dropped in a few weeks back. This is the one that was blowing fuses. Now, uh, what I've done is I've got it on the test bench. Do you remember we gave it the visual inspection last time? We didn't see anything immediately obvious. Well, it's now on the test bench. I have pulled all of the valves out. The fuse that was in it was indeed blown. Uh, so I fitted a new fuse and I've now powered the amplifier on, on the test bench through the current limiting device. You can see the bulb is not illuminated. It's currently only pulling 11.6 watts out of the wall. Um, and the front bulb is glowing, as you can see. Okay, so what does that tell me? Well, at the moment, the only load on the circuit is the bulb in the heaters. There's no obviously any valves in the circuit to put, uh, put a load on that winding. The bias supply is working. And I can show you that currently on the output of the bias board, we've got a negative voltage of negative 64. Again, these numbers will be off because we're in limited mode. But that's it. That's the only load. And apart from whatever it takes to energize the transformers, that makes our 11 watts. So we're well, you know, there's no major shorts at the moment. There's no smoke. If the bulb was lighting up, we'd have something to think about. But at the moment, this amplifier is fine. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in the rectifier valve, which in a pro reverb is a GZ34, also known as a 5AR4. We're going to connect that up. We're going to watch the high voltage come up. We're going to monitor the current consumption and we're going to see what happens. Um, but because we're always in restriction mode when we're testing a faulty amplifier like this, we are not going to be risking anything. The bulb will do all the protection for us. So someone pointed this out to me. I actually missed this. Um, this is the new Gibson Jimmy Page. 1969 double neck the collector's edition i think there's 50 of them or something um you know custom shop murphy lab all that you know stuff um someone sent this to me um and i actually spat my coffee out when i saw the price and if you don't know here we go 47 399 pounds um am i living on a different planet to everyone else or do, is that just too much money um i know i watched the video i know he please played every single one of them and it comes with some cool bits and pieces but um forty-seven thousand pounds i mean that's not guitar money new guitar money anyway that's that's a fancy car that's a deposit on a flat that's not a double neck guitar um I don't know. Let me know what you think down below. But that forty-seven grand for a guitar, um, maybe I'm mad. Right, rectify valve is installed. Our current consumption immediately jumped to twenty-one watts, so the heaters are now pulling some current, and our high voltage is now coming up. Look, and it probably will get close to five hundred volts because again, there's no no other valves in the amp, so there's no load on that. B plus circuit. Steady at 488. Bulb is not glowing. Current consumption is stable. So what I can do now is I know from experience that there's not a short in the B plus rail at the moment, but I can just take my meter and I can measure all the points in the circuit where I expect to see voltage. Again, no loads. These are all going to be very high. So I just work my way down. And just check that where I want to see voltage, there is just as a, just as a starting point. Yeah. Okay. Good. Excellent. Happy with that. So now we've got our B plus rail energized. Again, still 21 watts, so we're not 
putting uh, lots out the wall, the bulb isn't glowing, no smoke, no fire. We've got a load connected anyway, but that's just uh, you know out of habit. Don't need one at this point. All looking good. Okay, so the, what I want to do now is stress test that B plus rail, which means putting in the six L6s. The pre-out valves don't put enough load on the circuit uh, in order to help me accurately diagnose a fault at this stage. So we're going to put the six, six L6s in, we're going to watch everything come up, and then we are going to take more measurements and see where we are. Right, I've just plugged in the six L6s. You'll notice our B plus voltage has dropped because we're now getting a load on the circuit. We're now up to 30, 31 watts out of the wall. Starting to get a slight glow on the bulb. So we are now pulling some voltage and current. See, our B plus is now dropping as those six L6s warm up. Our current consumption increases. Again, this is all normal. This is what I expect, right? I'm not seeing anything that's scaring me at the moment or giving me any cause for concern. This is everything that I expect to happen when you soft start an amplifier like this. Now, usually with a 100 watt bulb in at 240 volts um, in restriction mode with most of the load in, well, again, there's no preamp valves, we normally sit around 36 watts. So again, this is where I want it to be. Quite happy with it so far. What I am going to do, however, is now I've got the output valves in, I'm just going to take some voltage measurements at pins one, which is the control grid where the bias voltage will be, pin three, which is the anode or the plate which is the high voltage pin four which is the screen again that will be high voltage but should be slightly less and um have we got we haven't got any cathode resistors so pin eight is grounded as you can see so let's do that let's see where we are so pin one on so this is v7 and v8 so we'll do v8 first pin one our negative voltage, our bias voltage, negative 41.6. And let's compare that to the other side. 42.1, close enough, nothing to be concerned about. High voltage from the output transformer, the plate or anode, 359, 357, 359, and on the other side, 359 so the same each side and finally the screens now i'm going to be measuring after the screen dropper sorry the the screen stopper 470 ohms on pin 4 362 361 swap to the other one 360 361 okay so they're the same each side right now those aren't the correct operating voltages, as I've said before. It's because we're in restriction mode. Those will come up when we take the bulb out of circuit. But so far, I'm quite happy. What was our negative voltage, our bias voltage? About 42, negative 42, coming off the, the bias circuit, negative 49. We've got that modded circuit in there. Where am I looking? There you go. Yeah, there it is. Cool, okay. So at the moment, I don't need to worry about the output stage. I'm happy with that. But we're not pulling enough current to pop that fuse. Um, so let's put the rest of the valves in. Remember, there's only five in this preamp because he doesn't run one in V1. So we'll put all of those in, in order. I'm gonna do this off camera, but as I do, I'll monitor everything. And should I come across anything concerning, I'll show you. So no news is good news. All of the preamp valves are in, or at least the ones that he runs. 
Now at 37 and a half watts out the wall, so we've gained half a watt of consumption by putting the five preamp valves in. Our B plus is nice and stable, nothing's going on. I'm injecting a signal into the channel and the amplifier is passing signal, although because we're in restriction mode, it is very low. So we, we don't have to worry about that for the time being. I know it's passing signal. Right, so what's next? It hasn't blown a fuse by far. The bulb isn't glowing at full brightness, so there isn't a sh uh, an immediate short. So now our next stage is to give the amplifier full voltage, so remove the bulb from the circuit, and take some measurements and monitor. Now, because I can monitor current in real time, I can quickly flick back to res restriction mode should there be an issue. So we'll do it together. We'll just let that settle to where it's happy. 86 watts out the wall. This is idle. There's no signal going through it at the moment. 87. Just letting it settle. Find out where it's happy. Our B plus is stable at 478. Eighty-eight point one. 88, 87.9. Okay. Let's just look at the output on the scope. We're driving 4 ohm load. This is my 4 ohm load box. What do we call that then? 12.8. So I've just done the uh, the bright switch, and you can see, look, awful oscillations there. Mm. Anyway, we'll turn it off. We're currently running at 173 watts. Call it 13 point, 13 and a half volts into four ohms. Four ohm, 13 and a half puts us at 45.6 watts. I mean, these are 45 watt amps, aren't they? So that seems to be all right okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to leave this soap testing and running i'm just going to monitor everything and see if anything changes i'm just going to take some more I'm just going to drop the signal out take my idle measurements check that we're happy where we are and then we'll soap test it and see if anything plays up and just why that soap testing here's the uh current operating conditions of the amp uh, current mains voltage today is 244 volts. The amp at idle is pulling 416 milliamps, gives us 88.3 watts of consumption. V8 and V7, anode cathode voltage 474 on each side, grid voltage 474 and 472, no issue there. And our bias voltage negative 54.6 and negative 55.5. So a slight variation there, but again, nothing that's going to concern me at all as to why this thing keeps popping fuses so we'll just leave that soap testing for an hour or so we'll just monitor it see if anything changes if the output level increases or decreases or anything like that that oscillation with the bright cap in place is concerning I don't like that whatsoever take it out uh, but everything else, I mean, those peaks don't look great, do they? But we'll see where we are. Anyway, we'll leave it running, see what happens. Okay, so uh, I had the Pro Reverb running on the bench for ages. I heat cycled it a few times. I can't see any reason why that fuse popped, or at least there was nothing evident to me on there. But the amp is also in for some other bits and pieces. So um, he wants me to give it a full service, replace any caps and resistors as required. He wants the half power switch fitting. Now, do you remember on the oscilloscope, we had um, a parasitic oscillation with the bright switch engaged, but also I noticed that when the base control was turned up, um, you could hear an oscillation as well. 
and that seems to be related to this mid control that's been installed on the rear right so i've spoken to him and he's quite happy for me to demod this amplifier so we're going to remove the mid control which i've already unsoldered we're going to return that tone stack to normal uh he does want that half power switch fitting and what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove the mid control we're going to put the this fuse holder here where the mid control is and put the half power switch right here that's the best place for it right between the two valve sockets so that's what we're going to do i'm going to add some cathode resistors and then i'm going to go through and just uh, give it a good old service there's a couple of things on this board which i'm not happy with the main one being this let me zoom in for you whatever this mess here is so we need to sort that out um a lot of the solder joints and things don't look that impressive and these resistors as well they do go noisy over time so we're just going to get a good old service and a sort out um this cap here doesn't need to be 450 volts and i don't like the way it's flapping in the breeze so we're going to do that um going to rebuild the power supply on the other side of the chassis just give it a good once over then we'll fire it up and we'll soak test it again and see where we are but there's nothing in here that i can see or oh, the other thing i want to do is to add a ht fuse uh, for the b plus rail uh, which and i think the way i want to do that is i'm going to put it in the here's the center tap for the red and yellow wire for that high voltage winding so we're going to lift that off the ground and then we're going to put like i do on my amps a high voltage sorry yeah high voltage fuse in there as well i think that would be a good way to update and protect this amp i want to update the bias supply uh to the black panel version the early the, the more common supply so we're going to do all of that and we're going to make sure that this amp runs um i mean it's as best as it can be but you can see the board's quite um quite bendy so i don't know how much life is left in this amp but there's certainly a lot that we can do with it especially sort out some of this lead dress see if we can make this amplifier a lot better for him okay so we're back on the pr35 build now we all make mistakes i'm gonna put my hands up here and i mislabeled the chassis do you remember i was telling you this meant to be a brown panel amp well i was just looking back over the order books and it's in fact got to be a black panel amp so i've now got to thankfully i hadn't got too far with it so i've just got to uh, convert it over to black panel then i can carry on with the build feeling a little bit silly but you know stuff happens and i caught it the pro reverb uh good progress on that one i've uh had to order uh, a some more half power switches i thought i had enough in stock but i don't so i've got one of those on order but we've the bias is done the output stage is done uh, cathode resistors in so i can measure the bias on the socket and i've gone through and done some other bits and pieces so that's to one side while we do that but i need to crack on with this pr35 get some light on it there we go so i so since last week's video i haven't done anything to this um i've been building a load of elysium pedals so need to crack on with this and i'm glad i caught the issue the mistake uh thankfully it's not going to take me too long in this condition to convert it over to black panel um and you see i knew it was black panel because the cabinet is black but for some reason in my head i wrote i wrote on the chassis that it's brown and of course that's what i go by so um you know hold my hands up made a mistake anyway right we'll crack on with this and come back to you shortly okay so i did promise you the cornford hellcat now this isn't the one that i had in last year i think it was february february march 2023 we had a hellcat in which i think was ahead uh, i need to look back but anyway this is a 2x12 combo that's come in and it's got a really cool logo on it look anyway this one is in overall it's in pretty nice condition 
just the usual battle scars and whatnot. Unfortunately, this side of the cabinet looks a bit worse. The Tolex is, is coming away. It looks like it's had a drop because there's definitely cabinet damage there. So um, up here, if you can see, you know, it's got a damaged corner. I, th this, I think the, he told me that the it got damaged in shipping when he bought it for, uh, secondhand from a from a dealer, uh, which is unfortunate. But anyway, he's he does actually own a number of corn for damp, so he knows. You know, he's a big fan of them. He's really into them. Knows the type of thing that, you know what they should sound like and what they shouldn't sound like. And he says, unfortunately, this one does sound rather unwell. His main complaint is that when it's on the gain channel, which I think is channel one, the modern channel, rather than the vintage channel, uh, the gain or the level of distortion kind of fluctuates as you play, which is interesting. He says the EQ, the treble middle bass, really weak. You know, the knobs don't really affect what's going on. And the other issue was, ah, yes, an issue with the reverb. So just two secs. Yes, so this is the original reverb tank for the amp, a Belton uh, 3AB2A1B. I'm not sure what the BS stands for. <laughs> Answers down below. But he, I'm not sure why he replaced it. Maybe it stopped working or it wasn't sounding right. He's found what he thinks is the correct replacement and installed that. But because the numbers don't quite line up with the standard naming system, it's probably a, a unique tank for Cornford or to their spec or something. He wants me to check that this tank is indeed correct and will work. And there's no issues with that. So I'm going to have to pull that out as well. While we're looking at the back, let's give it a check over. So it's got a inspection sticker dated 2020. And here's another one from 2017. So these are what we call PAT test, portable appliance test. If you're not in the UK, you won't know what these are. But uh, it's uh, most electrical appliances that are used in commercial prom pre uh, premises uh, like you know gig venues and things need to be inspected externally by, by a competent person once a year there's a test procedure that you go through and if it passes you get a sticker and that means that this appliance is safe to you so if you want to take it out to a gig venue most venues will insist that you have a pat test on them uh, but it's also useful for me to see when the amplifier was indeed last checked which appears on this one uh, it's a UK date, so I'm afraid. So 2nd of March 2020 by by Tom. Anyway, so this is the Cornford. What I want to do is um, I've already play tested it with the customer when he dropped it off. Um, it does sound very. I mean, there's a lot of gain on tap, but it doesn't sound right. There's definitely something weird going on, and it's definitely got that sound where it sounds some it feels like somebody's chucked a blanket over the cabinet and it's slightly muffled and you're hearing it in the room next door that sort of sound some of you will be familiar with that so it's got that going on i confirm the eq is weird the cleans are quite nice though especially when the, the reverb's going it's got some nice cleans to it so yeah we need to investigate that but what i do note did notice or some of you may have known were um may have experienced this before but if you play for example a chord and you let that chord ring out you'll hear in the mid-range you get like a slight oscillation just as the whole thing fades and and, and and drains away we'll call it this one does it really fast and it's quite pronounced but in a really odd way almost i'm trying to think of the best way to describe it it's like it's, it's oscillating, but it's an asymmetrical oscillation. Uh, like, almost like a tremolo, but the bottom half of the sine wave is different to the top. It's very strange. Uh, if I can recreate it on the test bench, I'll get you a sound sample, because it's really interesting. So, yeah, we need to go through the amp and 
Uh, he wants us to give it a check over in the service as usual, make sure it's okay. But we need to go through it, see if we can find out what's going on. Uh, visual inspection first, and we'll go from there. But I'm going to pull this panel off and let's have a look. So I've just pulled the rear panel off, and the two screws on the left are fine. No issues there. But these two, I'll try and show you, are actually bent. Can you see the, the bend in that, that twist? This one as well, less so. Now, these two were on this side of the cabinet. You can see there's some damage there. And, of course, this is the side with the main split in the cabinet. Can we see? You can't see anything on the inside. But definitely on the outside. Got some damage. Right. So that's the first thing I've noticed. Second thing is this cabinet is really chunky in the size of this rear panel is absolutely monstrous um you don't get cabinets built like this anymore uh, i mean the thickness of it is including the tolex 19 mil so that'll be 18 mil ply won't it that's absolutely huge uh we just measure the 18 and a half mil on the top and sides Yeah, so it's 19 mil ply, isn't it? 18, 19 mil ply. But actually, look, there's some damage. That cleat is damaged. It's come unglued. So we need to sort that. Right. Let's have a look. What do we see? Well, it's got a pair of Celestian Vintage 30s in, 16 home. And I can't remember. There is a way to tell if they are foreign made or if they're UK made. I think all the Mezabugi ones were made in China. The rest were UK made. Um, but there you go. And you can see, actually, you can see they're front loaded. Very cool. Right, can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see this bent transformer? I'll plug that. Let's try and get you a better view. So I'm doing this all on the fly. So um, I want to make sure you can see everything I can. Can you see how bent that is? <laughs> so that transform is definitely bent. Thankfully, it doesn't. It looks like it's just the mounting tabs rather than anything important. But I can also see that this one is bent. It might not be that obvious on camera, but I can definitely see. Those tabs have been pulled down too, and in fact, it's now touching the side handle. Right, okay. Can I get a number on that reverb tank? 8AB, 2A1B. That might be okay. That might be the new... Eight just means short tank rather than four, which is the long tank. And A, B, 2A, 1B. A, B, 2A, 1B, that's fine. Yeah, so that's a, that's a fine replacement tank. Right, uh, Cornford Hellcat, four EL84s and five preamp valves. One, two, three, four, five. Nice high quality reverb connectors couple of filter cans but some bent transformers right let's pull the chassis out and have a look inside shall we got damage on the outside do we have anything damaged on the inside right before i show you the inside of the chassis i just want to show you we can now see the rest of the damage to this cabinet i get some better lighting on it there you go in fact, if I, the baffle, move slightly. And in fact, this crack here opens up. In fact, the whole side moves. Look at it. All right. Um... Oh, yeah, look, God, look at that. It's 
that whole cabinet's falling apart. We'll see if we can re-glue that back together for him. Right, chassis time. Right, I've got you on the wide, wide angle. Hopefully you can see everything. Okay, so uh, those transformers are definitely bent. Now I can see them from above. But anyway, let's give this thing an inspection. So we've got four EL34s, and they are all JJs. Great, love those. And we've got ceramic sockets for those as well. Payout valves, probably got a mix. I've got some, looks like they're Gene Alex in here. So somebody spent some money on some nice, some nice valves for it. Well, they're gold lions, are they? Yeah. And again, ceramic sockets for the preamps. Gold pins on those bases, look. Yeah. Okay. Nothing else to really report on the top side of the chassis. The only thing is it's got JJ branded filter cans. Sorry. Which I really, really like. These are fantastic. JJ have been making some really, really good capacitors. So, um, yeah, I've been a big fan of those. I use the multi-section can in my PR range, and I have used these 5050s and the 100-100s in other builds as well. In fact, if I could get a consistent supply of the axials, I would use them in other builds as well, because I do really, really like them. Right, let's chop this chassis over and have a look, shall we? Ooh. Oh, oh yeah. Go, I forgot. I forgot. I forgot just how sparse this chassis is. There's nothing in it. Absolutely nothing at all. Look. So, what have we got? Um, main socket at the rear. Two fuse holders. Impedance selector switch. Output jacks and probably a foot switch, I would have thought. And, or maybe their foot switches. We'll have a look in a minute. On off standby, dual light, controls along the front. Rectified diodes, B plus rail, or bias supply, maybe. Tag board construction. But look how much space you've got. I mean, look, that's my hand. Yes, I've got big hands, but such a massive chassis. Now, can we find a signature inside? Is there any evidence of who built this amplifier? Because all the ones I've seen before, Martin Kidd has signed them himself. But I'm afraid I can't see any signature in it so we don't know if martin built this amp himself let's come around and have a look did we look at the serial number i think that's martin's writing but i'm not sure but he normally signs the chassis so why can't we see any evidence of that but anyway yeah so he uses a tag bog style construction um oh you're loose aren't you Can we see anything that's going to give us an indication as to what is wrong with this particular amplifier? No. Nothing burnt. Nothing out of place. All wired up nice and neatly. Ah, okay, so those two are effects loop, foot switch, speaker sockets. Because I don't get many cornfords in, I'm not from that overly familiar with them. But yeah, okay. Right. Anyway, that's the um, that's the inspe chassis inspection done. Um, 
next next step will be to get this on the test bench plug an oscilloscope into it and see where we are oh i've just seen something look does that resistor look discolored to you i mean look at the color of all the other blue ones and that one looks weird definitely a different blue isn't it hopefully that's coming across if we look at the front board might just be a different manufacturer of that component actually yeah maybe that's what it is so anyway yeah inside the cornford so what do we know we know it's definitely got some playing issues it's got a, it's been dropped it's got a damaged cabinet it's got bent transformers but i can't see anything that's going to cause me any concern or at least anything obvious i think we should quantify or clarify uh that would say right oh that's definitely the issue which means we need to go to the next step which is on the bench with an oscilloscope seeing what's going on um all of those valves looks like they're all swapped in at the same time we need to check that you know all those preamp valves we need to check that the they're all in the right place and they're all the right type because often you can get issues where people have put for example a 12a t7 where a 12ax7 should be or vice versa we need to check the operating conditions of the output valves and we need to check see if we can work out why this tone stack um considering that it is an an it is an anode follower uh, which tend to be a more powerful type unless it's a james um why that isn't doing what it's meant to be so yeah cornford hellcat on the bench right pr35 progress i have done the black panel uh, conversion which I needed to do I have wired up the four preamp sockets the output valve sockets the rectifier socket and all the pots along the front so I'm um, just going to give it a quick tidy up so next step will be what have I got to do um, got to do the input sockets and I've got to do the output from the volume control to V1 pin 7 yep and what else what was the other thing oh yeah, then heaters output socket uh main socket and the last of the bias connection bias ball connection and then that chassis will be done so yeah um it's coming along really great really happy with this just keep it try and keep it nice and neat well, i shouldn't be doing this through the camera i need to do it with my eyes but yeah anyway good progress on that one today really happy um what was the other thing i was going to say hmm oh yes i finally had notification that the sh uh, cabinet for the black hawk that's going to norway is on its way to me so this one is nearly ready for shipping when that arrives i can turn it around and get it out the door of course i'll show you guys all of that as well and the cabinet for the 18 water the plexi 18 that's also going to falcon music is um Im is arriving imminently so good news on that so uh busy week this week uh tomorrow is friday and i'm in in the morning i've got a couple of customers dropping things off but in the afternoon i'm going I've got to drop an amp to a customer, uh, but another customer is going to come and meet me at the same time to give me his amp for servicing. So I'm out on the road in the afternoon. Um, but, you know, that's that's all part and parcel of it. So, yeah, this is why this is the last thing I'm filming this week on a Thursday afternoon, because tomorrow is really busy. I won't have time to do anything, and I've got a lot to get done. Um the Elysiums that I've been doing, I've just got two more to build and then I can get those shipped. So um, good progress on those. Really happy. Get those out the door. I need to 
get some time spent on that Rambler and the Tone King. Um, I did get five minutes onto it, but nothing concrete. And I do also need to make progress on this Dexter build. So that's where we are. Well, that's it then, guys. Thank you very much for watching once again. Bit of a longer episode for you this week. Um, good views on the channel. Subscribe account is up. So thank you very much for everyone who's clicked that subscribe button, uh, given this video or, or any previous video a thumbs up. Comments down below. I do read them all. I can't always reply to them, but I do read them all. A um, couple, couple of you have actually signed up to join the channel and support me that way so thank you so much that's really really appreciated everything seems to be going in the right direction i really really enjoy making these videos so thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to do so um, i'm going to be back on the live stream hopefully next week at some point um haven't decided what we're doing yet but um i'm improving it as i go haven't had a chance this week so i'm really sorry if you were looking forward to that but that just leaves me to say thank you for watching once again and I shall catch you all at the next one.